Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News in Shinrin Yoko, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, June 1st, around midnight 2021. More snow in the forecast for British Columbia and uh, take a look, Alberta. But the big story May 2021 was the coolest May in 30 years. Heads up, 60 parts per million more CO2 didn't drive temperatures anywhere in three decades. There it is. There is the current data point, May 2021, just 0.08 degrees C above the 40-year baseline. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. No warming scene, but beaches, barbecues, and brrr. Did it actually snow on Memorial Day weekend? Well, it did in Vermont. Can you believe that? Tweak of the East. Scenes of pink sunset over snow-top mountains here. The sunset viewed Monday from the deck of a residence in Paradito Acres. Oh, my goodness. A close-up of the bright pink sunset over snow-top mountains viewed Monday from the deck of somewhere near the Sierras. Well. <laughs> Extreme heat and will continue in the Northeast into the first days of June, but the outlook shows cooler than average or temp average temperatures ahead. This is goes against the grain of the mainstream and NASA and NOAA, which predicted uh, exceptionally warm summer. What a bummer. Excessive heat warning continues until Tuesday at 9 p.m. But then it will get cooler. Like a booler. And here we have the excessive heat warnings until Tuesday, 9 p.m. But take a look at the blurry photo here. Above average in the northeast and below average in the west. That's the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. Heads up. Three quarters of the continent will be cooler than normal. Texas, the nexus of the schmexus in the head. Look at that. The crosshairs of the cooling. Which is not normal, by the way. None of this is normal. This is a grand solar minimum pattern. Extreme cold in the northeast, extreme heat in the summer. What a bummer. These locations named as the most at risk for the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season. And we want to keep you all up to speed here. The agency predicted six to 10 of these storms were likely to become hurricanes with wind speeds in excess of 74 miles per hour. But the locations in question that we want to point out tonight, according to NOAA, data collected since 1851 through the last year, 40% of all U.S. hurricanes hit the state of Florida, and 88% of major hurricane strikes have hit either Florida or Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. So all my friends in Florida, well, it's been quite a while since you've been hammered, and it's coming. North Carolina and Louisiana also topped the list of the most direct hits on the mainland U.S. coast. Though Puerto Rico is not included in these figures, it's due. In an analysis of the probability of being struck by a tropical storm or hurricane based on storms hit with around 100 miles from 1944 to 1999, NOAA found that New Orleans has a 40% chance every year of experiencing a boom or a strike. And here we see the 2021 hurricane season names. Anna, Bill, Claudette, Danny, Elsa, Fred, Grace, Henry, Ida, Julian, Kate, Larry, Mindy, Nicholas, Odette, Peter, Rose, Sam, Teresa, Victor, and Wanda. And you better watch for Wanda. Claudette's going to be a boon. Well, Grace will not give us any. And hello, Kate. That could be devastating. The highest risk, the agency said, were Miami and Cape Hatteras at 48%, followed by San Juan, Puerto Rico at 42 So there are the people that should be properly planning for the inevitable. Hatteras, yes. Miami and Puerto Rico. Heads up. Southern storms and heavy rain, persistent western heat. Slow-moving weather system may produce isolated severe thunderstorms and heavy rain in the lower middle Mississippi Valley and portions of the southern plains into the high plains. Strong high pressure in the west continues to produce record-breaking heat and elevated fire weather threats, but that will be quelched 
in just 24 hours. Dangerously hot conditions are present across the interior of California and the desert southwest as they fearmonger for the heat. Well, that doesn't exist. Do you see this? This is the same temperature back in the mid 90s and all the way back in the mid 80s. Same May temperature, but the coldest May in three decades. Completely insane, isn't it? I agree. Here we see the snow falling in British Columbia and Alberta through June 9th. Take a look at that. So we have some heavy snow moving in here. June 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Heads up. That's the totals. Melbourne shivers through the coldest May morning in 70 years. One Australian city has shivered through its coldest May morning in more than 70 years with frosty temperatures across southeast Australia. They've got hot chicks in long dresses with squirrely little circles showing you green dots in the middle of nowhere. It's insane. Erosion threat in New South Wales eases this morning, however. Renmark has its coldest May morning on record, while Adelaide feels chill on the last day of autumn. Now, many of these sources, and I'm, I'm happy that I saved the headlines, have removed the records, and they just say it's the coldest in a bit, just a couple years. But it, in fact, Melbourne has shivered through the coldest May in 70 years, and all of Australia on the east are breaking records decades old. Now, snow falls in Drakensberg and Lesothel. Has nothing to do with Australia, but everything to do with Afrique. The South African Weather Service warned the public to take extra care in livestock because of icy conditions. The latest forecast indicates slight probability of above normal rainfall for the winter season. And that's not pleasing anybody. There are 58 of the Berkey Pass, but the little is all closed because snow is falling in South Africa. What say you? Exceptional snowfall. The biggest in over two decades pummels Patagonia. Holy Bologna. Ushaya is the city in Argentina. It is located in the Tierra del Fuego archipelago, the southernmost tip of South America, nicknamed the end of the world. For a full week now, historic accumulations of the global warming goodness have been inundating the city. And Al Gore is nowhere to be found. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. Now, all of you know where he's at, but I don't think he does. No bun cake. Get in your hole. That prick. 6.1 magnitude quake rattles Alaska. The quake centered at a depth of 27 miles and was reportedly felt hundreds of miles away, and people shart their pants, to be quite honest. Several earthquakes shaked Lake Tahoe at the same time, while... The Karens are sharding as well with the big one overdue. Is it coming soon? Well, of course it is, because all the big quakes are coming soon, like a boom. Seismic update, no quakes of note. <laughs> we did have one in South Carolina just 24 hours ago that raised some eyebrows, but all is quiet on the Western Front. The weird electromagnetic bursts appear before earthquakes and why we might, may finally know why. Well, well, the wrong camera is on. So, it's all you get. Flat Earth, danger, don't fall out! Okay, so that's all we're gonna do there because even though the camera's on, it's not on. Now, electromagnetic bursts appear before earthquakes and why we may finally know why? Hi-fi. When the fault valve eventually cracks and pressure decreases, carbon dioxide or methane dissolves in the trapped water and is released, expanding in volume and pushing the cracks in the fault. Pushing them. So, slow slip occurs. Get the latest updates on breaking news and extreme Wow. I apologize. As also gets electrified with electrons raised from the cracked surface, attaching themselves to gas molecules and generating a current as they move upwards. Now, these electromagnetic bursts actually electrify the fault planes, causing them to slip. But there's more information. There's actually an earthquake that lasted 32 years 
and scientists wanted to know how, but we just told you how based on this paper. So they're just putting the pieces together. Now this earthquake, when a magnitude 8.5 mega earthquake struck off Indonesia in Sumatra on February 1861, it caused the land to convulse. And it was right after the Carrington event of 1859. This is an after effect. The earthquake actually began 32 years prior and scientists want to know how. Well, it was because of a grand solar minimum, increased cosmic rays and electricity in the Earth, fueling that for hundreds of years, or over 100 years, culminating in the 1861 quake, which was the precursor was the 1859 Carrington event. So if you're not picking up what I'm, not, what I'm putting down, well, I can't help you. Long live shallow, slow slip events on the Sunda mega thrust. This is the paper to prove the headline. A 32 year slow slip event caused by grand solar minimum, increased cosmic rays, and our sun caused the 8.5 mega earthquake that struck Indonesia. And more are coming. And we're warning you. Now thousands flee Goma as the threat of another volcanic eruption looms. Dozens of emails coming in. Hey, I need a vacation too, yo. Now they're all worried about a limnic eruption on the Democratic Republic of Congo's volcanic nightmare coming soon. Now the phenomenon of limnic eruption first came to the world's attention August 1984 when 37 people mysteriously died at Lake Muan, Mununun, in western Cameroon. Now, a limnic eruption is when volcanic activity combined with a deep lake can spew out lethal suffocating gas. This could be SO2, CO2, or any number of gases. Scientists found that Dissolved carbon dioxide gas in the depths of the lake had erupted, creating an invisible cloud that surfaced that were borne by winds into homes and fields, snuffing out all life. You can't escape from this unless you have a scuba equipment. Two years later, more than 1,700 people and thousands of cattle died in Lake Nayos, also in Cameroon strengthening the belief that earthquakes and volcanic activity can trigger these unusual events. And yes, it's true, because it's proven now, multiple times. Now, more than 600,000 people live in Goma. Although the region, region's population of 2 million, in addition to more than 90,000 people who live across the border in Rwanda, in the city of Genesi, both cities lie on the northeastern shore of Lake Kivu, which dominates the Niragongo stratovolcano, nearly 3,500 meters high, that straddles the East African Rift tectonic divide. Now, the much feared volcano roared back to life a week ago, and this is followed by hundreds of aftershocks, which was increasing. So many people have evacuated. And that's because of this limnic eruption potential. Now, unfortunately, the volcano has erupted in the last 24 hours to 20,000 feet, so it's ongoing. We don't know if it's limnic or if it's hitting the lake or if that's a subsequent future eventuality, but we're keeping a close eye on it. So there is that. And let's just run down worldwide volcano news. Let's show more. We have definite uptick in Stromboli. Savankaya puffing to 27,000 feet in Nirangogo over in uh, Congo. Decreasing activity from the 20,000 foot eruption earlier today is now at 18,000 feet. And we also have Fuego at 16,000 feet. Fagrados Fall continuing activity with a decreasing trend, hopefully, after it increased over the last several weeks. Stromboli, short phase of intense lava splattering spattering during Sunday night and Monday morning. And Etna, 
updating with multiple paroxysms over the last few days or weeks. Now, new measurements reveal the full danger of the world's largest volcano, and we're talking Mauna Loa. Say it ain't so. Uh. It appears as if Mauna Loa is about to blow up. Active for the last 700,000 years and dominating the landscape of Hawaii, Mauna Loa is the largest shield volcano on Earth, above water at least. And new data has revealed more about what might be enough to set off future eruptions. Yes, and it's coming. Looking at shifts in the ground track by GPS and satellite data, researchers have been able to model the flow of the magma on the inside of the volcano, as well as figure out what would and wouldn't be likely to trigger the next major eruption from Mauna Loa. And that would be a six or greater magnitude earthquake. And once that happens, well, it's boom time, kids. So that's what we're waiting for. Cancer-causing chemicals found in 78 sunscreen products, which you're slathering all over your body right now. The independent lab that made the findings is calling on the FDA to recall these sunscreen products. Ever-increasing amounts of sunscreens every year contain benzene or oxybenzene or some version of benzene, which is bad to the human species. Period. More than 200 bodies found at indigenous school in Canada where they were beaten, raped, malnourished, abused, and just generally fucked with. And it's completely disgusting. How humans can abuse other races is beyond thought and reproach. Now, the current narrative is that all white people are racist and we need to bow down to the, uh, the brown and the darker brown people. But I can assure you that racism is not in my vocabulary. I've lived in every community. I've been traveled the world. I've lived in the deepest, darkest ghettos for a large portion of my life. And I get along with all races because people are people. Why should it be you and I should get along so awfully? Depeche Mode, 1983. Now, the fact that there were actually people torturing, starving, raping, and burying the dead in a re-education school for Native Americans up in Canada should embarrass all Canadians. It should be headline news. Yet there's nary a peep. And it's disgusting, as disgusting as North America and the Holocaust of 13 to 50 million natives as we moved in. Aren't you proud? A CD slice of history. Here's where watermelons actually came from. And it's boom time, kids. Watermelon was domesticated in Sudan from the Kordofan melon. New genetic study suggests scientists have sequenced and analyzed the genome of the Kordofan melon, Citrus lanulus, subspecies Kordofanus. A Sudanese form of the melon, which is non bitter whitish pulp, and found that the subspecies is the closest relative of the domesticated awesome melon. Yes. Sandia much? Everything you need to know to see the rare, risky, and weird-looking sunrise eclipse in North America on June 10th. Well, first of all, you need to be a tweaker. Second of all, you need to live in the Northeast. And just a limited area of the window up in New York State, let's say Philly, is on the crosshairs of the best crescent moon retina-burning experience where idiots... Hopefully, Democrats can look up and burn their eyes out and become blind forever. So, take heed. Annular solar eclipse. Not a total one. Just one enough to burn your retinas out. Will be happening on the morning of June 10th at sunrise. So, if you voted for Biden, look up and look deep. All of JBS's U.S. beef plants were forced shut by a cyber attack. Hundreds of you have emailed me. Dozens of 
uh, videos have been produced, fear-mongering about the fact that uh, meat is going to go to $80 a pound. Steaks will be unavailable. And Ice Age Farmer is responsible for most of it because 150,000 people watch this fucking video. Totally insane. Why you actually gobble up the gobbledygook from these schmucktards. Now, JBS barely controls less than a quarter of the meat uh, flow. And this 25% of the meat flow is the most disgusting, overprocessed meat that you don't even want to get your hands on. So if you have a clue and you're buying stuff that's not uh, completely frozen in the center of the aisle, that's made from pigs that are probably from Mars, you won't care about this. Most of the fresh cut meat in my area comes locally and has nothing to do with JBS. Only if you live in a major city where you're in a food desert where the actual meat is seven years old will this matter. And it won't matter based on the entire article and the entire argument. Because it's the retailer has to imp increase the price. And according to this article, retailers will not incre increase the food prices. Yeah, you're fine. So... All the fear mongy, fear mongy channels, which, with have, which have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and are now feeding the forest nonsense, fear mongering into the masses, can kiss our asses. And I'll make you a bet. I bet you $100,000, Ice Age Farmer, that the price of steak in one year is no different than today. In six months... No different than today in my spot because it's the highest it's ever been and no one is paying for it. So they're giving it away free. It's being closed out. You have no idea about markets. You have no idea about uh, the global process. You're simply an executive from Oracle that is trying to make money because you retired early and you have no clue, period. Study finds face masks did not slow the spread of COVID-19. Well, we've been telling you that for a year and a half, that it's all nonsense. And now they're telling you the truth, which we told you a year and a half ago. Same with the explosive study, study that claims to prove that sci Chinese scientists created COVID. Well, this is now allowed uh, across social media platforms. The, the idea that COVID-19 was developed in a lab. Now, we told you about this 18 months ago. Ho, ho. Hope you were listening. Earth's rotation is also changing speed. And you should be worried. And it's because the Earth has been slowing for millions of years. But that's according to the mainstream scientists. What they don't pick up is that they're wrong the entire time. The Earth slows down. And then it speeds up based on space weather, the influence of the cosmos. And we're going into grand solar minimum, increased cosmic rays, increased rainfall, increased flooding, increased lightning, increased hail, increased spin. And that means it's boom time. Reasons why the geomagnetic field generation is physically impossible in Earth's fluid core, Al Gore's a whore is because this hundred-year-old nonsense fairy tale is the same as all of cosmology. It's a fairy tale, and no one has the balls to change it. But I do. Check out the video I just blasted out on Magnetic Reversal News, Reasons Why the Geomagnetic Field Generation is Bullshit. And you can get up to speed. Let's refresh this and see how many people watched it in the last hour. Was it an hour of power or was it a cow? Yes, 728 now in one hour. That's pretty good news. You want to know some more good news? Yes. Well, it's actually bad news. 38 subscribers gone this month alone. Please become a Patreon. We will adorn you with all of our video productions from all of our platforms in one space. Here at our Patreon at Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Patreon. You get 
Three Canyons Permaculture Farm, Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Shinrin Yoku, and more. And that's a boom. To content. We are content creators, and we want to keep you busy. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. We thank all of our Patreons that stuck with us, the ones that fell off. You might have had financial hardships. You might have been collecting unemployment for the last year and a half. Who knows? But the most important thing is I hope that by unsubscribing, you can now actually invest in cryptocurrency. For those of you that listen to us, please donate to our Polygon wallet and be safe. We love you. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Become a Patreon. Click the bell, subscribe to the channel, share this with like-minded people, and you will be the hero that everyone's talking about in a year. Mark my words. And be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to the longest podcast in 11 months. Na -na -na -na.